Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5e because I always talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Okay, so the topic for today is Is Marisha Ray right about ball bearings? Whoa, who is Marisha Ray? Well, for anybody who doesn't know, and I, I find that hard to imagine, but if you don't know, um, if you've been watching something like Critical Role, which is a live streamed game played by a number of voice actors who are pretty good at playing the game, Marisha Ray is the wife of the dungeon master, Matt Mercer. And she has been playing in his games for quite a while. And she's been absolutely convinced during her play of the game that the concept of using ball bearings in Dungeons and Dragons is super useful and she's constantly pulling them out and trying to use them. Now I think Marisha Ray is onto something unfortunately for Marisha, her luck has been appalling and her application has really hit quite a few snags along the way and I feel really bad for the fact that she's gone to so much work and she uses them so much and you can see Matt Mercer really sort of having a um, squirming as he knows that nothing seems to work for her. So Marisha, this video is for you to help you out and all of those people out there who are ball bearing lovers. That's right, if you are a ball bearing lover, this video is for you. Now, I knew that I could not answer this question on my own. So I approached the Dungeons and Dragons community and I asked on Facebook, look, what are some uses for your ball bearings? How can you apply them in the game and make them useful in some way? I got some good results and I got some not so good results. Um, the, the funny ones, I will still include some of them and some of these are definitely legit. So they're not just me making stuff up and seeing if I can get a laugh out of you. Um, so I have actually done a bit of homework, we've got some material for you, and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so first off, when it comes to ball bearings, and um, <clears throat> you need to make sure you start out with a magnet. Keep a magnet, because you're going to need that magnet to keep all the ball bearings together. It will also help you pick up the ball bearings, or collect your ball bearings, uh, when you drop them on the ground, and you're finished using them, and you need to uh, try to... Uh, recollect them otherwise you go and buy another bag of ball bearings look ball bearings aren't expensive they cover an area of about 10 feet by 10 feet if you spread out all of the ball bearings in the bag so <clears throat> it's not too bad that's pretty good and it makes it difficult terrain and you've got to make a saving throw to try and move across that space the saving throw is not very high but it's still going to be difficult you know slows down movement might allow you to uh, escape uh, making you faster than your enemy at least when they're moving through that space okay so make sure you have that magnet ready to go so I've been told that it's really useful for checking the incline or decline on a hard surface so what you do is you place one ball bearing on the surface and you can see where the incline is, where the ball will run off. Um, sometimes this can be useful with regard to traps that you might encounter, particularly if you're dealing with a boulder trap, because usually there needs to be have some sort of incline on the passage uh, for, the, for the boulder to roll down. So you can place that on a surface, particularly a long passage, uh, where you think you might be walking into a very nasty trap. You can also place this rather handy tool on the top of a staircase. Now make sure it's got a hard surface, a hard wooden surface, a hard stone or rock surface, uh, maybe marble, something like that. So place it at the top of the stairs or near the top of the stairs or in a very, very narrow doorway so that uh, if somebody comes to the stairs, they stand on the ball bearings and, whoosh, and away they go. Um, they're gonna have a bit of a tumble. Um, Somebody's going to need uh, medical insurance for that. Do Dungeons & Dragons adventurers actually have medical insurance? I have no idea. Uh, you can paint these things pink and then sell them to people as everlasting gobstoppers. If you've been watching something like 
Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And they will be convinced that they will last forever. Will they actually taste nice? I don't know that they will. I think this was really just a uh, trying to make a quick buck out of something that's not terribly tasty or useful. But anyway, doesn't matter. You can use them to counterbalance when you're weighing a small item. So if you have a set of scales and you need something to use as whales, um, um, as weights on the other side, you can use your ball bearings to help counterbalance it and figure out roughly, you know, if you know the, the weight of one ball bearing, then you can calculate based on how many ball bearings you put on the other side of the weight or scale, um, how, how much weight is on the other side when you're weighing your gold and your silver and so forth and trying to figure out things. Because, you know, that's uh, an important thing to do, particularly if you're weighing um, gold nugget nuggets and it's not in an actual coin as such, it might be a useful application. So a couple of minor uses for using your ball bearings, but good news is there is still more. You can put them in the corner of a door. Now make sure that you jam them into the door to stop the door from closing on you mm -hmm. by accident. Usually not by accident, because it's usually going to be something that the dungeon master has cooked up. But yes, you can use them and jam them into the, the door and the door frame so that it can't close. Now, some door gaps are going to be very large, so you need to have the right size ball bearing. Other than that, you'll need to make sure you put them. They're going to be really good for a stone door with a very tight seal. A wooden door or a steel door might be a bit more difficult, particularly if there's a big gap at the bottom of the door. But for doors that have sort of a tight seal, could be very useful because, as we know, doors do suddenly close when we don't want them to, and therefore we want to keep them open. So jam it open. You could also, of course, use a piton to... Uh, jam it open by just tapping it in there. You can jam up a lock, so maybe you're moving through a location, you close the door behind you and you want to jam the lock up so somebody can't use a key to open it um, or get through it once you've locked it or for whatever reason. So you get your ball bearings and if the keyhole is large enough you can drop your ball bearings in there and jam up the lock making it un openable. They're going to have to smash it. You're going to have to get something very, very hard and heavy and uh, apply a lot of muscle to smash that lock open because they're not going to be using a key anymore and good luck with the thieves tools because that's probably not going to work either. Ha ha ha. You can use it as a source of metal obviously for your bullets. Uh, if you have a gun toting freak in your party or somebody who is a uh, consistently using a sling. So I feel like uh, this is a ready supply of very, very small bullets that you can hurl at a target rather than getting your normal bullets that you would have for your sling. You can use your ball bearings. They're very small, uh, therefore they might be a bit more difficult to, um, to, to fire out, but ball bearings, a musket or gun, if you use guns in your game, certainly another option a ready supply there for you. You can use them as a tasty snack for distracting hungry rust monsters. You know, you don't want your armor gone, you don't want your weapons and swords and so forth uh, eaten by them, so drop down some of these ball bearings, let them chew on those as you run away. Uh, and of course you want to sort of scatter them in, a, a, in an area so they take a little bit of time to eat, eat all of the metal ball bearings. You can heat these things, yes, that's right, you can heat these things and you can also cool the metal of the ball and drop them into a drink to make yourself a heated or warm or hot drink or chill your drink if you want a chilled beer uh, in some way. I know what you're thinking, Fred, a lot of these things don't really sound like combat applications. Well, I didn't say I was going to provide you with options for using ball bearings in a combat simulation or uh, situation, but I am providing you with some options, right? Yes. Okay, teleport. If you have the teleport ability, then you can teleport, now this is really, really sick, try teleporting that ball bearing into the brain of a monster, going to require your dungeon master to play along with you, and then of course, Having a ball bearing or a number of ball bearings in your brain has got to be a really bad thing. 
I'm sure disastrous things happen when suddenly ball bearings are, are um, teleported into your brain. There's not really enough space for the brain anymore. There's bound to be a lot of uh, brain hemorrhage and a whole lot of uh, nasty things taking place. And of course, the monster will lose their marbles. And uh, that's exactly what we want, right? Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Now you're wondering, why am I showing you Stonehenge? Well, as it happens, you can place a ball bearing on a very hard surface to move very heavy items. Now I have been told that the reason they were able to move the stones at Stonehenge is a result of ball bearings, or very small pebbles. So essentially the same sort of thing, right? And they use them to roll them around along a hard surface. And now you can see there's grass everywhere. I'm not sure if that's exactly how Stonehenge was moved into position. I'm not really going to get into that, you know. Maybe they dragged them, who knows, who knows. But what I have been told and shown is that somebody actually uses ball bearings to move very hard, um, heavy items uh, with a series of um, planks of wood, uh, ball bearings and so forth, you can actually move something that you is way beyond your lifting capacity. Uh, you can shift it around fairly easily. You can even spin an entire building um, on a concrete pad. Now concrete pad, what we need is we need to have some sort of hard surface, whether that be marble, uh, obviously rock would be useful. Um, but uh, yeah, things like wood, a little bit more difficult. And of course, if you've got a, a grassy surface, well, forget about it because the ball bearings are just going to get buried into the grass and dirt. And that won't work. You can, ha, this is rather sick. And that is, you can cast heat metal on them and create a flameless heat source. Uh, you can also, uh, by heating them, uh, they then suddenly become a very hot uh, item. Something, if, you, if you've got a target, uh, and that you can actually hurl these in some way with, say, mage hand, heat it up for uh, ball bearings, could be quite painful because they are going to cause a bit of, bit of pain, right? Remember, just su suggestions. I feel like this is probably more useful against small critters rather than very, very large critters. Who knows? Who knows? Um, this one really cracked me up. When I heard about this, I was, like, trying not to laugh. But I thought I would at least tell you about it, and that is, you can cast darkness on one of these, place it in your mouth, and every time you open your mouth, suddenly the darkness spreads around you and your group, and you are unseen. And when you need to see again, you close your mouth. <laughs> um, this is pretty much providing you with mobile or moving concealment. How does that work for you? There's a big space around you that's just dark. Of course, you can't see where you're going, but um, that's why you open your mouth. You can now see where you're going, get your bearings, close your mouth again. Um, what sort of action does it require you to actually take to open and close your mouth? I don't think there's much of anything required for that. So very, very cunning, and I thought that was um, rather amusing if you ask me. You can cast light on one of them and toss them into a dark room so you can see stuff. Of course, you could cast it on anything and toss it into a room, but ball bearing's still an option. There are, in fact, a range of spells that you can cast on a uh, an item or an object, and a ball bearing is a good example, which allow you to do all sorts of very peculiar and interesting things with your ball bearings. And, of course, if you feel none of that's going to work, you can just stick with the player's handbook and go with, I'm going to drop them in the space that is um, allocated of um, 10 feet by 10 feet. And those creatures there now have to move through there as if it's difficult terrain, and they have to make a dexterity saving throw, otherwise they fall on their backside, which is always fine too. So make sure if you're going to do that, you need to have a hard surface. Don't fall into the trap that Marisha Rafe fell into, where there are little cracks that the ball bearings can get into. You need a nice hard surface. If they fall between the uh, the stones, stonework, then it's not going to be very useful. You need a nice flat hard surface, otherwise not useful. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you're going to waste all of your ball bearings. Make sure to put them in a doorway, a narrow doorway, or in a narrow passageway to get optimal um, use out of your ball bearings. Okay, so that is it. I honestly think that Marish Ray is correct. There are plenty of really good ways of using your ball bearings. Now, if you are suffering 
after seeing so many images of ball bearings, I do apologize. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. It was actually in the title, so there is a reason why there were so many pictures of very small metal balls. Now, if you have any additional uh, suggestions, make sure to let me know in the comments because that's what it's there for. Make sure to put them there because hopefully one day Marisha will see this video and she will know what to do with her ball bearings. I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters, which you're welcome to go and check out. It covers so many different aspects of the Dungeons & Dragons game. I'm sure you will find something useful. I have a Patreon page if you want to support and help me. Um, I also have affiliate links to the Book Depository and Amazon down in the description. Um, I also have a merchandise shelf as it happens, uh, which is sort of just a strip that's underneath the video. Make sure to share, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the bell button to be notified when I am live and I'm live a lot and when I publish and edit new videos and that happens quite a lot too. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s and make sure to use your ball bearings.